Oh, there you are, YouTube. So I think this is going to be another one cut day. Very busy with work. Normally, when the kids are down for their nap, I'm, you know, working out, doing something like that. Didn't happen today. Instead, I worked. So it was just... I don't know, no time to really do anything. Didn't, you know, film any meals or anything like that. I just worked, took care of the kids, that sort of day. I Maybe you notice something different here, if for some reason you follow along here. Normally when I part my hair, actually I'm always in hats because I don't like the way my hair looks right now during quarantine because I haven't seen a um, barber in forever. Um, you know, I guess like that it doesn't look so bad, but... It does look bad a lot of the time. Anyway, I moved the part over to my right side today. Don't know why, just felt like doing it. But and it's it probably looks like this when parted on the other side. But I've noticed with this mustache here, when I don't have it curled, when I have it sort of like, you know, like you see here, maybe I'll move it down like that, like that. I look like, what's that guy's name? You know the movie Argo? I look like a character in Argo. Is it Rory, Co Rory Cochran? I looked him up earlier today, but his name is escaping me right now. Rory Cochran. I think that's his name. I think if I'm getting anything wrong, it's his first name. I know his last name's Cochran, but I just kind of feel like I'm I got his vibes today with this hair this terrible quarantine hair this I you know can't get my hair cut hair but I'm not complaining about that I'm I'm completely cool I, our barbers are actually open you can get your hair cut I just don't feel safe doing that yet myself so this is all on me you know I'm not upset about not getting my hair cut or anything in fact, and I know I've said this in past videos, I may just have my wife do it because I don't really see myself feeling safe getting my hair cut anytime soon. So I might just have her cut my hair. But yeah, I just feel like with this mustache, with this hair receding long, receding in a way to where the hair shouldn't be as long as it is. What is that? Dark eyes. I'm tired. It's almost midnight. Anyway, it just reminded me of that Argo guy. I just need some, you know, tinted glasses, tinted big glasses, and then I, I think I've got him down. What do you guys think of Argo? Best picture winner? I know, I, like, I think other, I would have preferred other films to win, but this is how I kind of am okay with Argo winning. You know, at the very end um, of the movie, when the uh, end credits are rolling, and actually just during the movie, um, we see Planet of the Apes, uh, action figures at the end, and then we see Planet of the Apes, I think it's either the movie or the show, um, on, uh, television. And also at the end of the movie, during the credits, we see Star Wars characters as action figures. So when I think about people who are going through watching all of the Best Picture winners, which I like to do, you know, I'm sure there's going to be people doing that throughout history from here on out, watching all the Best Picture winners. You know, for Best Picture of 77, they're not watching Star Wars, they're watching Annie Hull. But they can get a little glimpse of Star Wars and the importance of Star Wars. So important that it shows up in an end credits sequence. Little action figures show up and help to inspire a lot of, you know, the events that happened in the movie Argo that will be seen in those end credits. So I love the idea that people will be watching all the way from Wings, the very first Best Picture winner, to currently Parasite, but whatever comes after, when they take that journey of watching all of the Best Picture winners, they're going to see a movie called Argo. They may not like the movie very much. Maybe they'll love it. But at the very end, they're going to see Star Wars action figures. They're going to see C-3PO standing there. They're going to see glimpses of Planet of the Apes. Another, another, uh, slipped on that word a little bit. Another great film that I 
think, you know, the original should have been up for Best Picture contention. I also think the most recent one, War for the Planet of the Apes, should have been up for Best Picture uh, contention. I mean, that movie's amazing. The Academy really slept on that, and I don't think they should have. All three of those in that, you know, new Apes trilogy, all fantastic movies, and got increasingly better, but they were already good. So it's just like, fantastic, amazing film, even more fantastic, amazing film, oh my goodness, even more fantastic, amazing film. Those Apes movies are great. But I just love that, again, people down the road, people right now, just sort of discovering that they like the Oscars, watching all the Best Picture winners when they get to Argo, regardless of whether or not they like the movie, they will encounter Planet of the Apes and Star Wars, and that makes me really happy. So that's why I can be very easily okay with Argo winning Best Picture. You know, I think it's kind of a divisive one. I think people are more and more leaning against it. I'm sure that will sway the other way someday, perhaps. Maybe not, but I don't know. I can kind of see it swaying from, you know, people don't think it should have won to, eh, it's fine. But I don't know how enthusiastic people will be about it. You know, I don't know. It's a good movie. But Best Picture, you know, it seems like there's a lot of, you know, did it really deserve that? But again, it makes me very happy, very joyous that when people watch that movie, when they are looking at all the Best Picture winners and they watch that movie, they see Planet of the Apes. They see Star Wars. They see these icons of science fiction in that movie. And again, I'm... I'm... I'm full of joy over that. I think it's so great. I love it. Wow, I'm at seven minutes. And this is a one take. I don't think I'm gonna edit anything out. So, perhaps I'll see you tomorrow for more Pure Hangout.